sure we add them to our prayers when we go to God. You know, corporate prayer, that's what we need. You know, he said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name. That don't mean just in the building. Yes. That means where two or three are gathered. If I'm praying for you and somebody else is praying for you, God is in the midst and you know your prayers are being answered. You know, we need six people when we die. Yes. You know, we ought to have at least six praying for us while we're on the earth. My God. You know, that all, all that, that's what I was going to do was try to teach y'all how to work the scripture. So um, as far as we already know, the ordination is, is postponed. Um, you know, we try to have the church doors open at 1230 so that it'll be warm in here. Um, that's what I want to say. And she's not here. Our, the cash app still works, but we she, she's got the phone with her. Um, five, what is it? 702-577-5485 is the church number. Anybody that needs a ride. Please contact that number and somebody will come and pick you up, you know, until you're able to do for yourself. Minister Edna is out today because she is doing what thus said the Lord. She is getting her car fixed. I understand it's only on Sunday that the man works. She tried to get him to come early in the morning, but I guess the man said it was cold and he's fixing it now. So, you know, we got to get our own house in order before we be standing up before God. Hallelujah. So she already told me she's in, you know, she's in the way of God, you know, getting her car fixed. And she'll be look, looking at the video later on. But, you know, make sure your house is in order because you can't come to God's house and preach and do whatever in God's house. And your house is a mess at home. Well, Amen. you know, scripture <laughs> says it like this. You can't. How can you say you love God, but you can't you can't stand your brother or the people that you see in front of you? So make sure your own stuff is taken care of. That's why I say, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one of them ones. You got to be in church. I'm not one of them ones. If you need to take care of something at your house, you got to take care of something at your house. But also when you ain't got nothing to do, you ought to be in the house of the Lord. You know, I thought about it, Minister Georgia. Yes. I think I'm going to be here on Christmas regardless. There ain't nobody here because that's just what I do. I believe in being with God. Now, everybody else can come if they want to. Then not. We're going to have service as usual. We just not going to, we're not going to exercise no belief in no pagan holiday. Let's just put it like that. Amen. I'm going to be here. Um, that was the prayer list out the way. There was something, oh, like I say, the cash app is working. It's, we don't have it right here today. It's, it's uh, with Minister Edna right now. Um, there was something else. Next month is fifth Sunday. I think we chose to go fellowship with um, Pastor Reed, right? Reed's Church on the fifth Sunday. Um, also, Bible study. You know, I'm just going to say that. I almost canceled Bible study because, you know, you know, I understand that's an extra day. But I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep going Bible study. I was going to put it on Zoom. But then I said, no, we got to assemble ourselves in the house of the Lord. In order to get the level of God in your life that you're requiring, you got to get give God that same level too. I understand we're going through a lot of stuff and on Saturday, you know, but Saturdays should be just almost as full as Sunday, if not if nothing else. So getting the word, just the word, is going to, I mean, to come here for the ceremony on Sunday, that's one thing. Worship, I'm, I'm a worshiper too. Amen. But I love the word of God. Amen. And it makes it rich when you're here. Because if you have questions, that's when you're supposed to ask. You have time to ask. Um, I'm not saying you can't ask me after service or whatever. But I'm just saying, to be in the house, how much time are you spending with God? That, I mean, that adds in. But I'm just saying, I'm going to have the church doors open as long as the Lord say. But it's, it feels better when you, I'm actually teaching and getting feedback. Because unless I get feedback, I don't know where y'all at and what y'all need. Hallelujah. So I need, I need to make the messages help you, not help me. So I'm just saying, we're going to keep um, Bible study at 1 o'clock. You know, we're going to open the church doors at 1230. But, um... If you want to see God move in your life, Amen. you know, you got to be there anytime God got the doors open. I understand you got stuff to take care of at home. And, 
Now, I've told y'all before, I could be in front of my 75 inch TV. But then I take that back. I say, because anytime that God is speaking and got the doors open, I'm right there. I'm just that way. And that's how I keep the level of blessing, I guess, that everybody want to look at in my life. Because I spend, I, like I said yesterday, I don't have all that extra stuff in my ears. I'm always listening to God. I have a TV, but it looks like a billboard in my house because unless he turned it on, it don't ever get turned on. Mm -hmm. You know, I got it for the family to come over. I mean, that's like once or twice a year or something like that. I'm always in God. You got to get to that point to abide in him and yeah. he'll abide in you. Yeah. Yeah. And when you yeah. get to that point, you'll notice all this stuff start falling away. Like I said, I'm going to bring my strap, yeah. my hubby, and my message. But all this <laughs> stuff will fall off of you once you start abiding in Christ. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's where you don't, you know, you get to talking to God and you sit and wait and hear an answer. If you are abiding in him, he speaks to you in real time. Like something can happen. Like y'all seen it many times. Something happened to hear God speak to me in real time and it, and it comes out. Because I spend my time with the Lord. I would rather be with nobody else. My, my, my. I just want to be with God. Glory to his name. Thank you. But um, I think that's all of the announcements that I had to say. I'm trying to think. I don't have an announcement paper up here. I left it. I, oh, I think I gave it to Minister Edna. And she has it. So what we're going to do, we were supposed to do it last week, but God had a visitation with the prophetess. So we're going to go to continue the other scripture that we was going to continue from the other word. It was Hebrews um, 12, verses 8 through 11. Hebrews 12, verses 8 through 11. I pray everybody has everything that they need. Like I say, I, I don't know why I feel this, but a closed mouth don't get fed. Somebody is dealing with something in here because they're not opening their mouth. They're not saying, you know, even with God, like we were teaching yesterday, God is not a taskmaster. We even have to ask him to be in our life and we don't have to. He's king of kings, Lord of lords. But we have to ask him because that's love. Mm -hmm. He's not narcissistic. Mm -hmm. He's not a dictator. He don't force himself upon us. Amen. So somebody's sitting around saying, well, God know mm -hmm. I'm going through this. God know he know what I need. Mm -hmm. But God say, ask. Ask. Seek. Ask. Knock. Ask. You got to ask him. He know. But you got to ask him. My, my. Asking him comes out of pride. You know, it takes Jesus. you out of pride. Yes, yes. If you're too prideful to ask God, God too prideful to do for you. Ooh, ooh. You know, you got to ask. You got to participate. My, my, you got to ask him. He ain't going to just give you something just to be giving it to you. Mm. He ain't going to just fix something just to be fixing Jesus. it for you. Jesus, come on now. You got to ask. I don't know who that's come for, on. but come on. Come on. something is going on with your life and you ain't asked God. Mm. Matter of fact, he's showing me that you're asking everybody else like the woman with the issue of blood. You're going in and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. But you ain't asking him. So when you turn to him and ask him, then that's when he's going to, you know, honor, you know, he's going to let you know. Maybe you don't want to go to him because if you you scared of the answer. But you got to ask him. Okay, Hebrews 12 Verses, um, no, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11, that's what it was, Hebrews 11, I'm sorry. Hebrews 11, verses 8 through 11, that's what it was. I'm sorry, one chapter, I'm trying to get ahead of myself here. Hebrews 11, verses 8 through 11. And it says, by faith, Abraham. When he was called to go out into a place where, which he should after receive for an inheritance, obey, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looks for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Mm. Through faith, 
So, so also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was just past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, the reading, and the doing of his holy word. Amen. Lord, I ask Amen. you, Lord, feed your people. Father, give them what you would have them to know. Father, open the intellect. Father, take away the slothfulness. Father, take away the pride. Father, give them discernment. Let them see the word as you see the word. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God just gave me a vision like of a cell phone. It, don't, it could be Apple, it could be Galaxy, it could be any kind of cell phone. It don't have to be no particular. A vision of a cell phone. And that cell phone goes and runs and it does everything that it's supposed to do. As long as it's got battery, right? Mm -hmm. As long as it's, you know, has a connection to the source. You know, we, we charge it and we go on about our way. But if it runs down the battery, that cell phone ain't no good to us. Put a, put a picture like, you know, we have to have a charging cord to connect to that, that charger. You have to have a charging block. And you have to have something to go into the wall, a source, the electricity. So as Christians, as believers, when we don't read our word, because y'all know that's our charging source, the word of God is our charging source. Come on, come on. When we don't go to our charging source, then our batteries run down. And, you know, the apps and things on the phone don't work as proper when they run down. Matter of fact, some apps take a lot of energy. And if there's not enough battery and not enough energy on that app, then the light, the, light, the app itself yeah. won't run. Well, well, it won't run. The light goes dim and everything. But when we spend time with God, we're on fire for the Lord. Man. When we read our word, when we read our scriptures, when we're studying our word and getting revelation, mm -hmm. that's how we get rid of that slothful spirit because we're yeah. spending more time with God. And after a while on a cell phone, when we have apps on our cell phone that don't work the way it's supposed to do, we normally just delete them. Mm -hmm. We get rid of them. Mm -hmm. God gives us gifts, spiritual gifts. And if we're not using our spiritual gifts, once a, we may look up and they're gone. I remember when I used to do this. How many times we said that? I remember when I used to could say or I used to could do this. Right, right. You know, right. if you don't use your gift, God well, takes it from you. My God. So that's like the like the analogy with the cell phone. If we don't never charge the cell phone, the cell phone can't do what we need it to do. Mm -hmm. We can't even make a call. We just carrying around a dead piece of device. Mm -hmm. So God, before the foundations of the world, gave us gifts. If we don't never feed you know, our our soul, we, we don't never sit with God and find out what he want to know. Only he know what gifts he gave us. So therefore, we have to go to him to activate those gifts. So we're talking about faith today, though. We're talking about, and we do all of this in faith. The beginning is by faith, Abraham. That's just getting to that point, by faith. That's a whole message in itself, by faith. Amen. Faith is not fear. It's the opposite. What was that the scripture? Where, where was I at? Let me see if I can get at get it since I'm right here. I said yesterday on Bible study. The definition, the one scripture I do know where it's at because that's the one that I've lived on for a long time. It's Hebrews eleven and one. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Let me show you something. Now fear is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That faith is the opposite of fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Are we living in faith or are we living in fear? 
Fear is not doing something because you don't want to be punished or, you know, you living under the laws of, of the word or, you know, the law couldn't save Moses. Amen. So faith is, you got to be able to move with faith. You, you, you have to, let me, let me do it this way. This is how I work the scripture. I got one, two, three, four scriptures here because I want to show y'all how to work the script, how I work the scripture. Hebrews uh, uh, 12 and 2, the first class. I don't know if y'all want to write them down because we ain't got time to go through all of them. Hebrews 12 and 2, the first clause says, looking in, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's what faith is. He is the author and finisher of my faith. That's how I look at it. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward, reward of them that diligently seek him. So by faith, we gotta we gotta have faith in order to please God. You All can't right, see God right. without faith. That's right. If you ain't getting up or uh, functioning in faith, you don't have God in your life. He, he can't show you nothing. Come on. Because you have to have your the glasses of faith on. You have to see God in the faith realm. So, not only is the author and finisher of our faith, but without faith. So, we got to have faith. If we don't have faith, I mean, he ain't the author of it. What you trying to get done? If he's not the author of it, then he's not going to do it. He's not obligated to do it. Come on. So, whatever he gives you. Let me go one more scripture. Psalms 37 and 4. Says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, we take that scripture and say, God, well, God gives the desires of my heart. If you read that the right way, the desires that he gives you are his desires. Yeah. It ain't, well, God, God gave me the desire to have a Cadillac. Well, in my case, he did, because I would have never jumped out there and got that if I didn't know he was going to keep it. But there are some people running out there getting any and everything, talking about God blessed them, and then they struggling with the credit payments. They, they, they credit cards is maxed out. Mm -hmm. They dealing with all kind of financial issues because they done ran out there and say, God blessed them. If God blessed there's another scripture I forgot to get, but it says, the blessings of God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. If that blessing is giving you sorrow, that wasn't in God's word. That wasn't, you know, you didn't like delight yourself in him to get that. He got it. You got it on your own. So that was your desire. But Psalm 37 and 4 say, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So if he give you the desire, that's him giving it to you. Your desire is lining up with his desire, which means, you know, your heart, your will is lining up with his will. You know, God's permissive will is when he allows us to walk in our will and have the things that we want. But God's perfect will is when we line up with what he wants. There are some of us, you know, I said it before, marriage. We run out there, Lord, I think, can we have this one? Can but if that ain't the one that God called for you, that's his per permissive will. You know, the one that God called for you, the one that you know that you know that you know that God called for you, that's his, his perfect will. If we are with somebody that God did not call for us, that's adultery in the spirit. The adultery is the person against God. Mm. So that's why they hollering and arguing and screaming all the time because that's a union that God never calls to come together. It was his permissive will. Now that's not saying anybody need to run off and go get divorced or anything. That just means you need to go to God. Because there's also a scripture that says that the believing wife can change or save the unbelieving husband and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God may work that thing or whatever. Divorce is never the answer because God hates divorce. But also in, there's a scripture in there that says sexual immorality is grounds for divorce. Because, you know, sex consummating the marriage, that's, too, that's where spirit comes together. If one is stepping out on the other, y'all got a whole thing. That's a whole bunch of spirits coming together. That's not of God. Amen. So that's what they call that poly, poly whatever. I can't even think of what it is. But that polyamorous relationship or whatever, that's not of God. So 
What I'm saying, another scripture, Psalm 37, 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways. Now we done read those four scriptures. All of those scriptures can be put together. Psalm 27, what Psalm 37, 23. Okay. Says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. So not only is he the author and finisher of our faith, and we have to have faith in order to please him. Yeah. We have to have faith to believe in him. We also have to delight ourselves in him. And he'll give us the desire, the thing that he wants us to have. Yeah. And by Psalms 37, 23, he will order our steps to get that thing. Woo. He will. We walk in him. That's how you work the word. When I say work the word, you got, you got to get the scriptures, put them together and work the word. You can't work the word if you don't know the word. That's right. You can't work the word if you're not in your Bible. So, as an example, and I do the example because this is what y'all can see. God was the author and finisher of that $40,000 car. I said, I would have never got that. I would have never put my neck out there that far knowing that I don't have no clock to punch in. He was the author. He was elevating my faith. So he's the author of that. He woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning told me to go down there and get it. It was already mine. Okay. 11 and 6 says, without faith, because I have faith in God. I believe him. You know, I want to please him. Um, he said, for that come of God must believe that he is. I believe God is. And that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. He's my rewarder. So I believed. I got up. Got dressed. Hesitantly. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Hesitantly I was, you know, sliding my feet. But I got up and I went down there to the place. I did what God said do. And then said, delight thyself in the Lord. The Lord knows I delight in him all the time. I try to keep him in my ear all the time. I try to saturate my atmosphere with him all the time. And he said, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Well, he give me that. I had never even sat in, looked at, or seen a Cadillac ATS. You know, every once in a while down the street, I would see they got different versions. But, you know, I went down there not knowing what I had. I had sat in one when I had been dealing with my son. And then that's when he, the next morning, he told me to go down there and get it. So that's how those three scriptures work together. So the steps of a good man are ordered. I got up. I got in my Toyota and I drove down there. He ordered my steps down there. He sent me to not only a salesman that knew God. Mm, mama. The man he was talking, his name was Joshua. I said, that's a Bible name. Mm -hmm. And that's how I knew he knew God because we got to talk about God. Mm -hmm. So not only that, his finance manager knew God. Mama. And like I said, I was about 20 minutes late to work, but by the end of that, when they took my keys to my Toyota, I had nothing but $1,000 in the bank account. I had just got paid. That's all I had left. And they took the keys to the Toyota, and when they went, God said, you ain't going to see them keys like that on your ring no more. And I'm just sitting there, who's Lord, you got jokes. <laughs> I'm still sitting there. I'm, I'm like Sarah and Abraham laughing, yeah. you know. But, you know, I'm just saying, Lord, you got it. Think, letting him know what I got. Not thinking about what he can do. Right, what he got. Right, right. So, long story short, they came and told me that they was going to take the Toyota. And they was going, this is the payment, this, that, that, other, and everything. And I was sitting there shocked. They told me, go ring the bell. The dome. Or whatever. <laughs> and then, not only... I, they said they would have it ready for when I came back. I drove my Toyota, got the other key to the Toyota. By one o'clock that evening, I was driving my Cadillac. But that's how you work the word. When you have faith, you don't sit on it. You have to get up and do something. If God tell you something, you got to get up and do what he said. That's what we had in the scripture. Um, Abraham was called to go out to a place which he would have to receive for the inheritance. He said he obeyed. He called him out to get up and move. How many times have God told you to do something? Have you? Do you know the voice of God? We keep saying that every week. Do you know the voice of God? He called you out to do something. Did you get up and do it? And notice this. I always like to notice this about Abraham. Abraham, 
He was young. And he didn't ask him, well, where are we going? You know, what kind of weather is it going to be? Do I need a coat? How are we supposed to dress? You know, do, do I need jeans and a t-shirt or is it a phone up there? You know, how long, you know, what are we doing? He didn't ask all them questions. He got up and moved. He got up and obeyed. He didn't know where he was going. He was leaving his family, all his tradition, his everything. I told y'all that, that one time, uh, Terah was his father. He was an idolater. Heron was based off, you know, that was the name of his brother, but it meant, you know, idolatry and witchcraft. They, he was living in some mess and some confusion. He was living in all that. And he didn't sit there and say, well, Lord, this is my family and everything. No, he just shut up and moved. It doesn't say that Abraham said anything. The only thing it says is that what Abraham did, he took his nephew, which was Lot, but he was supposed to leave, him, leave his kindred. So that was his disobedience. God didn't take it from him. He just let him walk. What I forgot to tell y'all was, for a topic today, we're going to talk about wandering in the promise. That's our topic today. It's wandering in the promise of God. You may already be in the promise that God gave you. He just ain't open your eyes to it because maybe you can't hear him. Or maybe you in an atmosphere that's not conducive to him and he can't show up. I don't, maybe we living in sin. I don't know. But God's promises are yes and amen. Yes, they are. If you don't have it, it's not because of him. Right. You probably wandering, just like the children of Israel wandered around 40 years of Mount Sinai on a three-day journey. They wandered around and they promised until all the people died off. And then God opened their eyes, told them to cross over the Jordan to get, that was Egypt over there. You know, Canaan is in the land of Egypt, I believe, if I'm saying it correctly. So, and he was telling them to come out of Egypt. Haran was in the place of Egypt, you know, and what it says here, he was supposed to receive it for an inheritance. When God brings you out of something, yeah. to go to something, he don't go there for you to rent. He go there for you to have dominion. To, you know, you take possession. If he pull you out of something, he's not going to take you somewhere just for a little while. God, when he elevates you, he elevates you. You don't have to go back down. So, you know, in coming in here, he said, do not despise small beginnings. We can't despise small beginnings. It's us. This, this, we're the faithful. They come in here every Sunday, every Saturday or whatever. And we in here, we are honoring God. It fills up. And that's another thing. God reminded me on Easter and Christmas is the, the days that the church is normally full. So we show they show up and I ain't here at Christmas. They gonna be still a door that's closed. No. no, they show up because they feel like they paying God on Christmas. Yeah, they feel like they paying God on Easter. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in here and hopefully the Holy Ghost arrest them with the word. So what I'm saying is God brings you to a place of elevation. Amen. Um, and God don't. We saw a new level, new devil. Mm. God don't elevate on levels. Right. God elevates on dimensions. He elevates, you know, dimensional status. So he don't do just titles and stuff like that. If we listen to God and do what God say do. Like I say, Abraham was called out for a possession. God called him out. God called him for dominion to move. What, what, are we moving on our own? Or did God tell us to do the things that's going on in our life that's got our life rocky or whatever? And it may not be in a physical move. God may be moving our heart to think a different way. You know, yeah, she was talking about it starts in the mind. It does start in the mind. But it's not activated or elevated until it's embedded in your heart. Amen. So once you get it embedded in your heart, then that's when change comes. You got to have it embedded in your heart. Um, we talked about Abraham didn't know where he was going. He just went. Okay, he walked around in faith because he could not hear God. 
That's where it says, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise. Sojourning in the land of promise means you just walking around. You're wandering, like wandering in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. That he was in the promised land, but he didn't know it because God didn't tell it. He couldn't, God wouldn't go reveal that to him, and he got had sin and stuff carrying right along with him. He was giving it to Abraham, not to Abraham and Lot. He was giving it to Abraham and his family. Lot had to separate from him. Some things in your life may have to separate from you before God blesses you. Because God is not going to bless no mess. Well, you can sit and wander around all, the, all day long. But God is not going to bless no mess. God is not on a timeline. God is eternal. So like we read later on in here, Abraham and Sarah was 99 and 100 years old yeah. when they finally, finally gave birth to the promise. Mm -hmm. That means God don't, you know, normally about 35 is hard for women to give birth or whatever, but God, he's the one that does it. You can't tell God, well, I'm getting to be 40. My clock ticking down. I, you know, I can't do it. It ain't coming to pass. God is the one who gives life. It. So it. <laughs> he waited all them years for them to get ready. That's why I say when you ask God something, make sure you're ready to go through the process to get it. Because whatever you ask for, you may not be ready for it. And like I say, God is yes and amen. So if you want a billion dollars, he may have to fix your finances and fix your credit and everything for a long time before you can manage a billion dollars and not hurt you or somebody else. Because he's not going to give a, an enabler a billion dollars either. Because an enabler would, would enable everybody else and just keep giving and might hurt them. They might kill themselves behind something. That's right. We can't be an enabler. You know, we can't play God in everybody's life. That's your God's job. He the only one to get that. Amen. So while Abraham was carrying around disobedience, God... Just let him wander. He loved on him. He let him wander. And he didn't bless him because he was walking in his will. And he wasn't walking in God's will. When we walk in disobedience, we're walking in our own will. We're not walking in the will of God. So God will open your eyes when you are walking in his will. He's the author. He'll, he'll sit there and share with you. He's a jealous God. He needs to get all the credit, the honor, and the glory. He ain't going to share his glory with you. You can walk in his glory, but he's not going to give his glory to you. It's got to be all him. He wandered around as a stranger in the company, in the country. He wandered around in his promise because God had shown him the promise, because had not shown him the because of his disobedience. He dwelled in tabernacles with his children because he had no place to call home. Y'all remember where it said he dwelled in tabernacles. Isaac and Jacob, because they were heirs of the promise as well. That means he didn't have a house. He slept in the churches. Yeah. How far are you willing to go for your blessing from God? Hmm. How much are you willing to get out of your comfort zone? If God told you to get up and leave physically, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to go homeless somewhere? Jesus didn't have a place. Even when he was born, he didn't have a place to lay his head. They made a place in a manger. Are we there? Are we that humble? Do we have the faith of God? You know, we got to get to that point. Or are we able to serve God only if he allows us to go to Summerlin? Do we have to have do we have to see where we're going in order to believe God? That's faith. Faith is not able to see physically. God can show you a vision from afar off and tell you to go get it. If he don't show you what, where, where to go and he say, get up and go, are we willing to go? Do we have faith? What level of faith do we have? If we don't have Abraham's level of faith, that's the reason why we stagnant and wandering in our promise. Because God got to get us to move. Without faith, he, we can't please him. 
Has God been asking us to do something Hallelujah. and we haven't done it? Thank you, Lord. What is, I mean, the, you all, y'all know the thing that y'all need in your life. Amen. Ask yourself, why ain't it being tended to? Why ain't God taking care of it? Hmm. Is it something in him or is it something in me? What have I not done? Have I even asked God for it? Do I pray to God for it? Do I read my Bible, spend time with God? Mm. You know, he is the word. Yes, yes. He's such a big God that he yes. can be on these, these pages right here. Yes. That's, I mean, he's God of all. Mm. That's how you spend time with God is spending time in your Bible. Mm -hmm. I was around a congregation of people. And my senses are very sensitive anyway. And I know these people weren't hanging around with God and spending time with God because I smelled Budweiser. Jesus. I smelled beer all over them. You know, just because you ain't doing it in front of people don't mean God ain't exposing it. So these people, and then there was another one, young lady, you know, sin has an odor. I smell, let's just say I smell the woman that has, you know, consummated. You know, that odor. Yeah. But they dressing up and looking like they're holier than thou. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, when we think that we're not doing something or we think that we're getting away with something on the outside, God has a way to expose it other ways. Well, I see all and know all. Right. <laughs> and because I don't say nothing don't mean I don't know. God ain't told me to say nothing yet. Amen. Hallelujah. So when he do tell me to say something, you know, that person ain't going to feel too good. Because when he has told me to say something in the past, that person stopped going to church because they were so, like Judas, they were so sorrow. Because that's deception. And that's leading people astray. These are leaders I was talking about. Yeah. That's leading people astray. So as leaders, I can't have people drinking alcohol and sleeping around and being out there. Because like I said, ministry comes from within. If you're doing that, that's the spirit that you're putting out there around the community, around the congregation. Next thing you know, they are doing the same thing. They, why I want a beer? My Lord. Why I want to sit up here and, oh, he look good. Why? This and why I'm doing it's because spirits transfer. That's a spirit of witchcraft. You got to be holy and set apart. You got to come out from among them. Whatever spirit you people bring me, anybody bring into this house is in this house. That's why you got to be holy and set apart. If you're not holy and set apart, and you come in, that we're going to have to answer for that. If I come in, been sleeping with somebody all night long, come in here and want to preach that, and you know, preach in front of people, and then other people fall, don't y'all know I got to be held accountable for that? That's what I'm saying. I believe that we can do one at a time, like she's saying. Amen. But if you dwell and abide in Christ, Jesus. If you in him all the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. he can take care of it all at one time because right, you won't right. be in a situation to where you'll feel comfortable to be doing whatever it is. Amen. So, Glory to you, God. Thank you. I'm just saying, disobedience has its way mm. where we can look holy on Sunday, but the rest of the week we doing whatever. Jesus. And God, he loves us. He really does. Yes, yes, yes. But we can't see the love of Christ in our life because we're not operating in faith to that level. We're trying to straddle the fence. I didn't know why he was going this way, but he revealed to me why he's going this way. Some of us are straddling the fence. And God wants to bless. He wants to, to rectify some things. But he say it's, you know, all in. Are we all in? I know we're in more than just Sunday in here because I, I feel the presence. But there's some of them that come in here, they just in here on Sunday. But when you come in here on Sunday, do you take him home with you? My 
Is he with you the rest of the week? Jesus. You know, you can have a visitation from God at home too. That's like right. I said, when the veil was rent, it was torn down the middle. You don't have to have a preacher, apostle, of nothing to come to God for yourself. That's right. God can show up in your house. Sure did. Showed up in my <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He can. And if God show up in your house, Jesus. is that going are you living in fear? Or living in faith. If you're living in fear, that's probably going to scare your socks off. I'm just saying, God is just not in this building. Don't stop just coming to God. It's time to abide and dwell with God. Amen. Because we're not writing the blood over the doorposts no more. As the children of Israel did in the book of Exodus. We're not doing that anymore. You know, the, when the pandemic came and the blood over the doorpost saved those that was for God. No, we don't have to do that now because we are the temple of God and we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. So the blood is written over us, over our hearts. If God sent another pandemic or allow another pandemic to come through, All right now. <laughs> is he written here? Hmm. Or is he just written on Sunday? Hmm. I'm just saying we got to, you're bubbling with joy when you spend every day with God. If we do the tithe, like I said, two hours and 40 minutes a day, we deserve, we got, that. that's what owed to God, a tithe to God of our time mm -hmm. to talk to us. That's how we get out of that slothful spirit because we sit with God. God gives us our purpose, tells us what, he, what to do. Our steps are ordered by him and everything that we ask him for him or we get to ask in him will be taken care of. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless your name, God. And I know that this is the last message that he's going to have with that because he already told me. You know, he's spanked a lot of people's butt. But now he's going to show his hand. Mm -hmm. If we're not walking in faith the way we're supposed to, we're going to go through some things. My son, not my baby boy. <laughs> well, my baby boy too, I don't know. But my son is going through some things for being hard-headed. Mm -hmm. I was talking yesterday, Bible study. I told him not to go get them payday loans. And we was wrong. It wasn't 7,000. 12 times 600 is 3,600 on a $1,000 loan. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. Ain't no yeah, it's $3,600 right. he paying. He can't pay nothing else because he paying the loan shark. On a 30, uh, on I told him $1, not to go out there. On it's, $1, on, he, all he got was $1,000 and he, he paying $600 a month until he got six more months to go. So he's paying $3,600 on a $1,000 loan. He was being warned and warned and warned. Now he's going through. Like I say, the school of hard knocks is what raises us. He's going through the school of hard knocks right now. And I told him, you know, I love you. I'm your mother, but I can't help you. He got $600 from me on top of that. I love you, but I can't sit there. If I keep going into him, he's going to pull me down. So he got to learn, you know, he got to do whatever he got to do to come out of it. So I don't know what we're doing in our homes today. I don't know if maybe we feel comfortable to stay at home or I don't know what it is, but God is saying that he can't, if we don't abide in him, he can't abide in us. So we have to operate in faith, not in fear. That's another thing I said yesterday too. Most of the thing that I'm finding out is a lot of us are not really not holding grudges, but we're living in PTSD. PTSD is a mental disorder that is um, it's called post-traumatic stress disorder. It's like if you sit in this chair right here and the leg breaks and falls over, say we fix that chair. Every time you come to sit in that chair, you're going to look at that chair. You're going to be skeptical. You're not just going to sit down in that chair. You know, that's what a lot of us have is PTSD. Because people have hurt us. We've been through a lot. Like I said, she was there by message. We've been through a lot through the pandemic. 
And we are scared to put our neck out there and love again. We're scared to do for people because we're scared we're going to be hurt, manipulated, abused, mistreated. We're scared. That's not the faith of Christ. It's not. Think about Christ when he was on the cross, when he was beaten to where he wasn't even recognizable no more. You know, stripes, crown of thorns, all that stuff that they did to him. If he had PTSD, we wouldn't be here. But he died and he rose again for us. He stuck his neck back out there for us so that we have an opportunity. You know, we can't put a heartbreak over. We can't. We got to just give it to God, cast the cares upon him. So that's why some of us is, is, you know, wandering around in our promise. God hasn't opened our eyes to what he has for us, our purpose, and what he wants us to do or solve some of the issues with us is because we are wandering around. We don't, we're not operating in faith. God tell us to do something. We ain't did it. We ain't heard God. And I know God tells you to do something because he speaks every day. Every day he speaks. So he running around homeless with his children, sleeping in churches and everything. It says, for he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Now in his mind, he looking for somebody that look like God, smell like God, the church is open and doing like God. You know, he's trying to get comfortable looking for God when God is with him all the time. He's sleeping in uh, the structure of God, you know, what he's used to. You know, he came out of idol idolatry. We don't know what that structure looked like. So if he's doing all of that, looking for that structure, something that looked like God in his mind said and what he think, he may not be able to see God. So he was seeking God's promise, but he needed to hear what the promise is from God. That's a lot of us. We go to these churches and we thinking we gonna look like God and see God there, and we see something different. You know, God may not be in that one person that we saw. God may be in something else. I went to a venue that I thought, you know, it wasn't right, but I sat there and I'm glad I did because the person that was speaking, that's where the message come from. That's where God was at. So we looking at at church and God the way we think that it's supposed to be in our own intellect God may be doing a new thing he may be doing something different yes, he is. you know the tradition is the destruction of these churches nowadays mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's why we don't flow in tradition we flow by the spirit Hallelujah. and you know a lot of it is flowing you know the past often played and everything like that but if people ain't getting helped if lives ain't changing I don't want to be here passing just no offer play I'm here to change the souls and stuff, to you know, change people's lives, you know, and walking with people and everything. I'm here to make, you know, a difference. I ain't trying to be the only one with a Cadillac. I want to help you get there, too. You know, I'm that person. I'm not here for a salary. I don't get paid here. I have a job. This is, I'm here because this is the structure that I have. That's the structure I want to be around. I'm not trying to feed my family off the heart backs of other people. That's Ezekiel 34. If anybody want to read that, that's Ezekiel 34. That's why they live in the way they live in, because God is not pleased with that. So we got to stop looking for God in the way we are used to. Can I say it like that? We got to look for God because he's moving. He's, he's different. You know, he changes. He goes, he got to go with the flow. Look at these youth that's coming up nowadays. Nice. That old stuff that we was doing ain't keeping them youth. We got one sitting there asleep. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We can't do that. But I know he expected to come in here with the whole, you know, everything to keep him up. But no, he need rest because he be tired. Mm -hmm. But, um, wake up and get on them drums. Right, he don't know how to do <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. The children aren't going to come in here and they're going to be asleep just like that. We got to move with God. We got to do whatever we got to do with God. 
to keep them interested or whatever. My mind was on the children that was here. You know, I don't know, we maybe need to do some of the children program, do something, get a youth youth day for them. Oh, they they up to Crystal. We, yeah, we're gonna do something with them. They gotta do something. Maybe let's reach out to them and they can do a poem, a program or something next Sunday. It's Christmas. You know, let's start working with the youth. Amen. We can't have them come in here and sit down and be bored. That's right. Because this level of teaching, they not gonna understand. No, they not. This is meat. We gotta give them milk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and some of us still need milk too, but That's we right. still Hallelujah. we 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 gotta we gotta digest it as best we can. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing I want to say in here. <laughs> Number 11, verse 11 says, through faith also Sarah herself received strength. Where are you at now? Uh, 11, uh, what is it? 11, uh, verse, which, what, no. Which book you in now? I'm in Hebrews 11, verse 11. Oh, okay. <laughs> she got me crazy. Okay, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who whom had promised. Notice Sarah. Remember Sarah laughed mm -hmm. when God said, when told her that she was going to bear a son. She laughed. Mm -hmm. She didn't believe God. Matter of fact, Abraham laughed too because mm -hmm. they knew they was already past that age. Yeah. They laugh. That's where their faith was. When you laughing, that's not faith. That's fear, basically, because you you laughing at God. Mm -hmm. Is God telling you some things, giving you some visions of things that you gonna promises that you gonna attain, but you laughing at Him? Like, no, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Like me, I was hesitant. I was talking the whole. I, I jacked up credit score because everything went down when I was in COVID. I only had a thousand dollars in the bank. I'm telling God what I had. And I'm a pastor. I'm saying, I'm, you know, do we get into that mode where we telling God what we can do? That's right. But we're not looking at what he can do. That's right. So they laughed. But it's saying she received strength and conceived seed. We ain't got no kids in here. In order to conceive, what that mean? That mean them two had to come together, right? Yes. They had to come together. They had to be on one accord to come together. And they finally conceived seed. Notice that she conceived it in the promised land. Mm -hmm. They was in the promised land when she conceived. So God's word will manifest all at the same time. She had to be on one accord with her husband. He had to be on one accord with his wife. Some of the things that we not getting is because of the people that we connected to. Ooh. Who are we connected to? All right. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, God will not bless you simply because you connected to the wrong one. Mm -hmm. So, and then, like I say, this is marriage here. If the husband and wife are on one accord, the blessing of God is there because he said if two or three who are gathered in my name. Husband and wife, that's two becoming one. Their lives should be blessed all the time if they're on one accord, you know, praying together, you know, family that prays together stays together. That's one of the cliches I like because it's yeah. true. That's right. When we pray together, we stay together. So Sarah had to become on one accord with her husband in order for Sarah to be blessed. That's part of the curse too. You know, because Eve did what she did. We got to everything. We got to be a helpmate to our husband and get everything through our husband because of the curse. Because of what she did with the serpent and everything. But she went, Adam fell. She did She did what she's supposed to do. She took it to him. And then they ate together. And then he fell. But we got the curse and everything. We got to go to our husband for everything anyway. So I'm saying, if Sarah was on one accord and Abraham wasn't, that means Sarah's praying. That's how you get your husband on one accord. You pray. You go to God in prayer all the time. Amen. All the time. You're supposed to be praying without ceasing. You're supposed Amen. to be in prayer all the time. Yeah. And God, you know, not in his ear nagging and stuff all the time. I don't know why I'm going this way. <laughs> 
Not in his ear nagging all the time, but you're supposed to be praying to God. And you'll watch God manifest through your prayers, through your husband. You'll see your husband change. You'll see your prayers being answered through your husband. You ain't got to nag to him. Nag to the one who created that's him. That's right. That's right. Come on. Go to the one who created him. That's how you do it. So they was on one accord before they was able to receive, to conceive a seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age. We already talked about that. God was waiting on Abraham and Sarah. They wasn't waiting on God. If God would, if they would have been 200 years old, God still would have done it. Because his word is, he's sovereign. His word does not return to him void. That was a word that he gave them and it was going to come to pass. So waiting on them to get done. So whatever we're going through in our life, the reason why we're going through it so long and wandering in our promises is because God waiting on us. Well, He waiting on us to stop being disobedient or come to him or, you know, maybe he'll tell us, you know, you got to get so-and-so out, you know, out the way. Or you, I told you not to take your kindred. Maybe some people you're around, you're not supposed to be around. So, and she judged him faithful who had promised. That means she got to that place. Because she laughed at first. Yes. But in order to judge him faithful, she had to get in her word and be with God. They had to get tired of wandering around in their old age. Just wandering around waiting for this promise to happen. They got tired of walking. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine. They got they 99 years old. They walking around looking for a home. Looking for this promise that God gave them. Sometimes you got to get tired of being sick and tired. And you just got to do what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. You got to get to that point. Hallelujah. So, in closing, I want to just say, you know, I feel like we're wandering around in our wilderness because I'm starting to feel it gets stagnant in here. Mm -hmm. And I have to say because of the word of the Lord, but I also have to say something because my house is attached to this church. If it gets stagnant in here, guess where I'm going to feel it? I got to keep y'all motivated. I got to keep y'all on your knees with God. I mean, you know, we pray and move in here. We pray and we keep on. We pray without ceasing. You know, we're always in constant prayer to God. That's how we get to know the voice of God, because we're always in conversation with him. If, we, if you just talk to him once a week, you don't never know. The devil could imitate him. You know they got them impersonators. Yeah. He can imitate him. You mess around there and follow what he said and you be finding yourself in a mess. Mm -hmm. But God is, is about to do some things this week. Ooh, I feel it. Thank you, God. He's about to do some things this week in the physical. Some things you're going to handle. You know, some, some things are going to happen and you're going to know it's God. Yeah. And the way I'm looking at it is it's like a tap on the butt. So these things ain't going to be good. He's going to allow some things to happen. Speaking of which, a couple of people already had their inspections. I don't know if that got anything to do with anybody in here. But they already had their inspections. Some people made it. Some people didn't. And they are never able to get another housing voucher ever again. So we got to live in truth. We got to sleep in truth. We can't live in deception. So I don't know what it is God is going to allow to happen this week. I feel it. But he's going to get your attention. He's going to do something and get your attention. And it's supposed to cause you to start praying and talking to him. Just pray and talk to him and, and you know, get to know his voice and, you know, build a relationship with him from that moment. Because... God is not playing. He's tired of the one foot in the world and one foot in the church. That's why I was shocked he wanted to come today. Knowing he didn't know what the message was. He's here. Amen. This is my baby boy. I love him with everything. He got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. He didn't know that. But my phone, like I say, I'm here. I'm praying with y'all. God is about to show you his hand. My God. He's going to show you some things. 
some things gonna fall off this week that maybe you wasn't expecting to fall off. But he's given the opportunity. It's time out for us to, stop, to keep playing with God. It really is. We got to either be for him and with him or not. That's it. You, you, you can't, he, he, he lukewarm. He said, I'll spew you out my mouth. You either hot or cold. And that's the reason why he's got to do this. Because he needs to show you that this is real. That he's still, he's still sovereign. I don't know what he's going to do. But I'm sure it's something you ain't going to expect. I don't know. You might be able to get to God like Moses did and pray. He prayed to God at the last minute and saved them 6,000 people's lives. Because God was going to kill all 6,000 of them over there in the book of Exodus. Y'all might can use this as a warning and get to God. I don't know. But I know God is tired. He's ready for his people because we got work to do. Yeah. We got to get learned. We got to get on the meat of the word. We got to get, you know, he got people in places, you know, teaching the word, but, you know, the laborers are few. Yes. He got to raise us up. So I just want to really show y'all how to work the word. Take those four scriptures. I hope you wrote them down or they'll be on the YouTube and work the word. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. If whatever you're doing, it's got to come from him. That uh, Psalm 37 and 4 say he gives us the desires of our heart when we delight in him. If you ain't delighting in him, God ain't gave you nothing. Because you got to hear God. He'll give you the desires of your heart. That's his desire. He's not going to give you your will if you ain't even serving him. If you ain't doing what he said to do. So once he gives it to you, the author. And you got to have faith in order to do it. And he's going to order your steps. That's how you work those four scriptures together. Amen. That's how you get God to, God will tell you to do something. And then you do this, and then you'll see the manifestation. God don't tell you something and just going to give it to you. Amen. No, you got to tell him, and he gonna, you got to work the work. Amen. You know, he's not an enabler either. <laughs> That's right. He's not. You got to do the work. And he'll help. You give him one step, he probably gonna give you ten, but you gotta at least get that one step. Glory so God. we'll Thank turn the you. hands of the pulpit back over to Minister Georgia. I'm going to get oiled up and pray for my child while he's in the house of the Lord. I'm telling y'all, I do the same thing I tell y'all to do, pray for your children. 